Look at that. That's some history right there, mister. This was the first place Henry Ford invented and produced his Model T. Inside that building were assembly lines and steel smelting and people were busy. Lots of sweat and lots of fingers were pinched. That was in 1910. It was the first time cars were made that way. A hundred Model T's a day came out of those walls. They could make a car in 93 minutes from start to finish. It changed the world and it changed Detroit. This was the largest manufacturing facility in the world. Quite a building it was. Now it's gone. And so is most of Detroit with it. All over Detroit you see remnants like this. Here's the old Packard auto plant. It was the most modern factory in the world. They built Packard cars and Studebakers in there. Well, that stopped in 1958. Gone are those days. <laughs> Today, this place looks like shit too. Everybody knows how Detroit's fallen apart. Whenever somebody talks about murder and abandoned and ghetto, Detroit's always mentioned. It has seen its best days. There's no denying that. But Detroit's trying to change these days. I'd heard about how Detroit's on the rebound. And that's what I came to see. Is our country's worst place improving? And what does that look like in the winter? We're at the beginning of a very cold road trip. Or it was supposed to be cold. It's February 10th when I shot this video, which is just about the middle of winter up here. Today in Detroit, it's 28 degrees and pretty windy. Today it was cold, but as we'll see later in the trip, my whole come up here and freeze my ass off plan didn't quite work out. The reasons I did this trip was because I've never shown you guys much winter before. It's mostly been good weather trips. If I'm going to do a winter trip, I should do a winter trip. Make it the coldest, bleakest, freezingest trip of all. I'm going to begin here near Lake Erie. Then I'm going to head up to Lake Superior at the top of the state and then travel down the Wisconsin side of Lake Michigan and then back here again. I'm going to show you all kinds of stuff, really pretty small towns, weird places in the middle of nowhere, and plenty of ghettos, because you guys love to see that stuff. Good for you. And it all starts right here in Detroit. Oh yeah, and I got a drone. So right now I'm at an abandoned mall on Eight Mile Road in the red zone. I probably shouldn't be here, but I'm here on a Sunday morning. And as you can see, the whole thing's empty. I'm gonna go drive around in some terrible neighborhoods in the red zone right now. See what I can see. I'm in the Detroit red zone. Man, it sure is rough looking in here, huh? And it was cold that day, mister. I mean, damn cold. The sun was out, but I had to wear gloves, sticking my camera out the window in the Detroit ghettos. You can see it in my face. Face is windblown, eyes are watering. Not fun. I don't mind doing this because I think America needs to see this. I think it's interesting.
If you know anything about the red zone, you'd know this is pretty much the worst place in Detroit. Murders, shootings, poverty, neglect. The cops don't even come in here at night. Or at least that's what the rumor is. I didn't come in here at night. Uh Uh-uh. I'm not stupid. I shouldn't even be in here now. But I am. For you. Now we're going to see a lot of this part of town in another video. I'm doing an entire video just on the bad side of Detroit for all you sickos. This is supposed to be a good video. So let's get out of here for now. Go to where the good things are happening. That's promising. A new building. It's a lot different now downtown than it used to be down here. There's new skyscrapers going up all over. A lot of the old crumbling buildings have been given a new facelift and some tenants. It's really clean. And they're even working to get all the homeless people off the streets. Downtown Detroit looks good today. Mostly. Okay, so what happened here? You know, why'd this city get so bad for so long? Well, you've heard the story. It all started when all the companies left. In the 1920s, the automobile industry was booming. Detroit had more car builders than anywhere else in America. People were getting rich, bitch. By 1950, there were 1.6 million people here. And Detroit was the fifth biggest city in the country. Life was good. Everyone was eating. And everyone had a new American-made car. But there were a couple of world wars. Gas prices skyrocketed. And the rest of the world started making good cars too. Better cars even. Some of them started using robots. In 1965... Half of Michigan's economy was the auto industry, but by 1973, it was down to a third. They had riots in the 60s, there was a depression in the 70s, the 80s came, and so did crack and welfare and gangs. All the white people fled to the burbs, the car makers left, and the whole place went to shit. It got so bad that Detroit saw its lowest point in 2011 when it filed for bankruptcy. Trash everywhere. Everything's gone. But things are changing now. Check this out. This is Brush Park downtown. This is where a lot of the auto execs lived in the late 1800s. Like everything else around here, This neighborhood had fallen apart. It used to be on the ghetto list. Even 10 years ago, this was a dump. Just giant abandoned homes. But then outside investors came in and they built these luxury mid-sized condos right here. And they even made room for poor people. They're redoing this whole park. All down here. And then just on the edge of downtown, here's another example. They've got this new Centennial Park thing going in along the Detroit River. Over there across the waters, Canada. This park's going to be really neat when they're done with it. It's one reason that Condé Nast said Detroit is one of the best places to go in the country this year. (laughs) What? I know, right? The place that we stayed in when we were here was another improvement. This building hadn't been used for forever until somebody came in and made the place cool again. It's happening all over downtown Detroit. And jobs are coming back into town too. 
They're making electric cars here now. They have new construction jobs, healthcare jobs. Little Caesars is HQ'd here. And look, they even have a Google office downtown. In Detroit? Dang. One thing that the city's really excited about is the poverty rate has gone way down. The poverty rate was 42% in Detroit just 10 years ago, and now it's 30%. They say 30,000 people in Detroit found work in the last 10 years. Well, that's wonderful. Down the road in Dearborn, they're finally tearing down the old Ford office building. That thing had been empty for as long as anybody can remember. I hear they're going to put in some fancy new condos right there. That's the word anyways. Downtown doesn't feel sketchy anymore. Well, kinda. It's pretty safe. I saw some homeless people, and there's parts of downtown on the edges where you have to walk on the other side of the sidewalk. There's people screaming and yelling, but the core of downtown ain't bad at all. I've seen way worse. After spending three days walking around downtown, I can say it looks pretty nice. In terms of entertainment, though, it's pretty limited. There really isn't a lot to draw people in yet. I was bored after three days. We wound up at the casino on the last night for something new to do. I got the impression that Detroit probably isn't ever going to be the best again. But I don't think they care about that. They just want to get better. And remember, this is winter. I hear in the warm months, it's a lot more lively. Detroit's one of only two U.S. cities to have all four sports teams downtown. The Pistons are back in downtown again. And then there's the Lions. God, these people love the Lions. They almost made it to the Super Bowl this year. And everybody in town was excited about that. Um, well, downtown, since the Lions were downtown picking up and shit, the Lions brought people back together. Yeah. They gave you pride? Yeah. You know, but now with a lot of the renovation and revitalization of what's going on downtown, as well as, I got to say, with the Lions doing their thing this year, it attracting people from other places, other parts of the United States, as well as other parts of the planet Earth. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, that second guy, his name's Bahu. I met up with him when I was in town. We sat down at his place in what most people would say is the hood. Cool guy. He had a lot of interesting things to say. So, you know, so I think with the Lions and I keep putting them in there, and just with a lot of the revitalization that's going on with the city and people such as yourself that give us a good press, that's going to bring some of the native Detroiters that, that took the flight and left. To come on back as well as people to say, you know what, I want to live somewhere else. You know what, maybe Detroit seemed like a place I would like to make home. A lot of the people I talked to in town told me that they feel Detroit's only getting better in the white areas. Like, big time developers are making money. They're like, yeah, downtown's getting better. But not in the hoods. Not where we live. We're getting taxed to pay for all the new stuff downtown. And then we're sending all this money overseas. And our hoods still look like shit. Well, I can say well, that is just not true. Well, okay. A lot of Detroit's black areas do look like shit. It's still dangerous and ugly and falling down. But they're removing a lot of the blight here. This was all way worse. You can see all the open areas. There used to be homes like missing teeth from a big crooked smile.
these are all houses. And now it's just ghetto in the woods. But there's a forest that's starting to grow back here amongst the trash. Entire neighborhoods have been abandoned here. A lot of the north and west sides look like prairies more than neighborhoods. You can get a home here for a thousand dollars if you wanted to. Most people don't want that. But I met somebody here who did do that. His name's Mark. How long ago did you buy this place? A year and a half. Yeah? All right, man, it's not, it's not done, I'll tell you right now. No, man, but you but, got a place? Is this yeah. your first place ever? Yeah, it's my first place. You know, I'm 24, so I was, I was trying to buy me something in my neighborhood. No, I bought one before, but this was on, it was on John R, bro. Yeah. And somebody I, burned I, it down I, because I was, I was a new person living, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about basically like, if I can do one property and still have it and then go buy some more property, because you know, I got kids and yeah. everything, so yeah. I was going to like, yeah. keep it. But I feel like that's a problem. We don't keep stuff long enough to give it to my kids or something. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Let's just have it. Have multiple properties instead of one. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'm gonna clean that up. But yeah, this basically really it, man. man no, like I said, thousand dollar house, bro. You can't beat it, bro. No, you can't. Shit, I you see, you get like a heater in here. Yeah, I don't, well, I don't live in here. Oh, you don't even. Okay, you just come over here and yeah, this I just your like hang out. My dogs and but you go over here to the one. But yeah, I just, I just um, come up here and feed my dogs, bro. But I'm about to really start working on it, you know? Yeah. Because I really want to live in it this summer, so I'm trying to get it. Do you even know how to do, like, yeah, the tree shed? Yeah, well. Because I know. I just know how to do, like, drywalling and stuff like that, but yeah. nutrition, not for real. So yeah, it's kind of fucked up in here, so. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, there's there's some roof stuff and some wall shit. Yeah. My, uh, my family always do it though, so I'm gonna go with them. There's a one-way street in here. I don't think it matters. Really? Where we are now is one of the worst places in the country. The Detroit East Side Ghetto. They call this the Red Zone. This whole area here is no go. Gangs rule here. Don't worry, it's early. It's been described as a war zone. It's bad. But they're trying. Most Democrat mayors defunded their police. Not here. Their mayor actually raised the police funding. Get this. Last year, Detroit had the least number of murders since the 60s. I know, right? But then some people say, well, yeah, the Detroit crime's going down. <laughs> That's because a thousand people leave this place every month. Forever. This part of town was 90% white back in the day, back when the area was thriving. Now it's 80% black. We're on the west side right now. It's about one o'clock on Sunday. I'm normally not out in the hoods this late in the day because there's people out. But I know some of these people. I don't think anyone's gonna mess with me despite the fact that I'm driving this car and everybody's looking at me. And by the way, this is the car I rented for the month long road trip. I told the rental place at the airport that I wanted a Jeep and this is what they gave me. I wasn't trying to flex. The ride was super slick, except for when I was in the hoods. A white boy in a $100,000 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. That didn't blend me in. I bet they thought you were a rapper. Most black people want to be rappers. Mappy, that might be the most stereotypical thing that you've ever said on this show. 
You know, I stopped to talk to a lot of these people in these hoods, and a lot of them made sense. You might be surprised to hear that a lot of them are Trump supporters, too. They don't like Joe Biden because he's letting all the Mexicans in. I don't think they like Joe Biden for more reasons than just that. There's a lot of good areas in Detroit. I always like to show you guys the rich parts of town, too. Most of the successful people live outside of Detroit proper. Once you get to the far fringes of the north side and the far east side along the lakefront, it's all mostly upper middle class white families that fled from the bad areas. This is Sherwood Forest. Super nice looking, right? It's actually affordable here. A lot of this stuff's in the 360k range, which is just about the national average. A lot of these people commute into downtown. It takes them about 15 or 20 minutes. And they don't stop on their way to work. Nope. In the car, don't look to the side, and don't get off until Jefferson. Because it's all hood between this neighborhood and their office desks. Then this is Indian Village. It's about 10 minutes from downtown. It's just a small little enclave of nice and right in the middle of ruin. I mean, in the middle. Look at the map. A lot of these houses were built by famous architects. It's one of the few neighborhoods in Detroit that were really wonderful that aren't collapsing. It's also one of the few hoods in Detroit proper that's a majority white. And then here's another nice area. This is Gross Point Farms on the eastern edge of town over by the lake. Families here earn about 150k a year. And these homes are about 350k each too. What a deal, right? Look at these houses. There's even a country club nearby. It's winter, so I don't think there's a lot of people out there golfing, but they can if they want to. And by the way, if you need a realtor, email me. I know real estate agents in every city, and I can introduce you to somebody I know, even here in Detroit. It's not all the rich or poor here. There's a little bit of middle class left in town. Just hard working people trying to stay out of the way, living cheap and getting by. A lot of people stay in Detroit, despite all the setbacks. They like it here. The crime and the weather isn't enough to drive them all away. But the property taxes sure are. Look at this. They're more than 3% here, which is the highest in the country. Crazy, right? And then they keep raising the taxes to fix the place up, and then it turns into a cycle. More people leave, so they have to raise taxes to make up for it, which makes more people leave. I thought this was just nuts. This really gave me perspective on the economic divide here. I was driving around on the east side of town in a gross point park. And then you literally cross into Detroit at the stoplight and it turns into this. Thank you. 
When I was out and about in Detroit, I did a lot. I was here for three whole days, people. When I was here, it was in the 20s, but it was windy and sunny. I'd have picked snow over cold, but this is what I got. So I braved the streets each night in my Great Lakes getup. First night, I kept it easy. Went for some Detroit-style pizza at a place called Buddy's. Everybody told me, you need to try Buddy's Pizza. It's old Detroit style. And it was packed in there. It was a Saturday night. As it turned out, this would be the largest crowd I'd see in town. The first night of the trip started with the Labatt's and a salad. That's because Michigan people drink Labatt's. I'd wind up switching over to Miller Lite when I got to Wisconsin in a couple weeks. The pizza was okay. Everybody was raving about this Detroit style pizza. Now they cook them in old auto pans and they put the pepperoni under the cheese and it's so good. Mm. <laughs> Downtown Detroit at night, it's pretty chill actually. I mean, it was cold, but it was also pretty quiet. I know it's winter time and I know there aren't as many sketchy people down here when it's below freezing. But downtown's clean. It's pretty safe. Just, you know, don't let your guard down. I saw people dining at fancy-ish restaurants. And there were a lot of people ice skating on the rink downtown on a Saturday night. <laughs> He's young. He'll be all right. Sunday afternoon, it's pretty dead. It's pretty clean. Sunday was kinda eh. It was Super Bowl day and nobody was downtown. Well, I asked somebody about that. He told me there really isn't a lot to draw people down here from the restaurants in their own neighborhoods. I'd agree with that. Downtown's not super exciting. 75 cent. Clearly, I'm not from here. Every station I see. My manager and I took the fun Detroit People Mover. It's their version of an elevated train. It goes in circles around downtown. It's kind of cool for getting around down here. Well, it was clean and it was free, and they have security on board. Can't ask for more than that. Night two was the Super Bowl night. And boy, did I wish the Lions would have been in the damn thing. <laughs> that would have been a whole nother video on its own. I can only imagine how much this place would have reacted to the Lions in the Super Bowl. Win or lose, there would have been a fire. But I had to settle for a Chiefs-Niners game. We spent the game at the Tin Roof. This crowd loved the Usher halftime show, mister. One evening, we drove over to Belle Isle Park. It's a little island in the middle of the Detroit River that's in between Detroit and Canada. It's pretty nice. They have a pretty cool view of downtown. Lots of people come over here and walk and picnic. They keep it clean. And guess what, everyone? No bums. At least not on the day I was here. If this was in California, there'd be tents everywhere. <laughs> they have some other stuff to see close to downtown, too. This is the Joe Louis Fist. They put a memorial here because the boxer Joe Louis fought hard against racism. 
He's not from Detroit or anything. For breakfast one day, I had to try the Lafayette Coney Island hot dogs. They're legendary in Detroit. They have pictures of all the famous people that have been in here over the years. I didn't know who they were, but they must be important. They didn't ask for my picture, though. It's basically just a hot dog, is all. I don't know why people flock here for them, but the experience was cool, I guess. Mm, an American Coney Island dog in Detroit. People said I had to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I didn't even get mustard in my mustache. Hated it. <laughs> On the last night, I told you that my manager and I went to the MGM Grand Casino downtown. It's about a 10 minute walk. It was a casino. Nothing special about it. It was super dead. The only people walking around in here were super stoned. And of course, I lost to 20. Hate these damn things. As you might know, pot is legal here in Michigan now. And you sure do know it. There's dispensaries all over town. Some of them look like they've been here a while, and some of them look like they're either about to go under, or they just opened yesterday. The place I went to, Live Cannabis, really knows how to hook up a tourist. Dang, buy one, get one. And they even threw in some gummies, because it was my first time. I didn't try any of that. I just bought it to show you how it all goes down. For $18 and 66 cents. What a deal. Lots of important music was made in that building. Detroit is Motown, in case you didn't know. Hitsville, USA. I popped by the museum that honors the history of the music that began here. Motown Records started in that very building. They called it Motown because that's the combination of motor and town. Because Detroit was also known as Motor City. They founded Motown Records in 1959. It was a pretty big deal because a lot of black artists first got their start here. Motown combined soul and pop. 79 top 10 records were cut in that building in the 1960s, 79. And then the Detroit riots happened and Motown founder Barry Gordy fled for LA. That was it. And I went to the Henry Ford Museum, or the Ford as they call it. Now you can spend a whole day at this place. The place is amazing. The history stuff they have in here is incredible. But it was also kind of hilarious. Made me feel real old. Oh my god. What? They actually have a bunch of old cars here that you can get up close to and touch. Real classics. Hey, I'm not that old. And then you see cars that you had and you're like, whoa. Am I that old that my car is in a museum now? And a Plymouth Voyager? <laughs> Do you know how many roller skating nights I went to in one of those? And then this bedroom from the past. How did teens live a long time ago? The museum muses. <laughs> uh, that's what my bedroom looked like? What the damn hell? I'm not that old. I mean, I had all this stuff. Did you have one of those things? The cable switcher thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can also see the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. That's cool. And they have the Wright Brothers airplane. That thing actually flew. They have George Washington's original Revolutionary War camping kit. Yeah, G-Dub slept right there on that cot. They have the limo that President Kennedy got shot in. That was a terrible day. 
And then they had the chair Lincoln got shot in. I think that's blood. That was weird. They don't make them like that anymore, do they? Can you imagine driving around the ghettos of Detroit in that? It was my last night in Detroit. I was just winding down in the hotel. Had my gloves and boots off. And then I looked out the window. What was this? A big fire downtown? So I had to speed down there to see that. Nick Johnson's on the scene, everybody. This is the kind of stuff I thought I was gonna see if the Lions won the Super Bowl. We are in downtown Detroit on Tuesday at about 8.30 and we got ourselves a situation here. People told me this used to be a club where they'd have music every now and then, but it's been a long time since it was a functioning business. Somebody else speculated this was done on purpose for insurance. And then a guy standing around said, there's two or three house fires in Detroit every day. This really isn't that big a deal. I guess it wasn't kind of surprising to me that most people were just ignoring the fire. Just another night in Detroit, I guess. And that fire was still smoking the next morning. People used to be afraid to come to downtown Detroit. But now it's cool again. The city was broke 10 years ago. And now there's a budget surplus. It's hard to know if any of the money's being spent correctly. And Detroit still has a long way to go. But anything is better than where this place used to be. So good for you, Detroit. So many other places in this country seem to be getting worse or don't even try. Downtown's nicer. The suburbs are fine. But the neighborhoods in between are some of the worst places you've ever seen. Detroit's like a cake. The rich people are the icing, and the bread is all the poor people. Poor people with hope. It's kind of rough out here sometimes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a lot of killing, a lot of drugs and shit. I got random bad cars and shit, and I broke my feet. Yeah. What's Detroit's biggest. Um... Well, downtown, since the Lions won, downtown picking up and shit. The Lions brought people back together. Yeah. They gave you pride? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> you don't smoke cigarettes, right there. I don't smoke, no. All right, thank you, sir. All right, man. Take All care. Right. So um, when I talked to you on the phone, you, you were talking about a lot of the, the, the things Detroit is doing better. Can you right. can you talk to me about how Detroit is a lot better than it was? Uh, well, it's a lot better than it was uh, years when I grew up as a youngster. Is uh, it's becoming more of a tourist attraction, so it's attracting people uh, not just from the outer regions of the met metropolis area, like the suburbs or whatnot people from down river, but it's attracting people from other states. Also, it's attracting people from other countries. You know, we always had our auto show, our annual auto show that attracted people from all over. And we had different other events like um, the festival, um, the music festival that always attracted people from Germany and different parts of Europe and different uh, parts of the world, you know, but now with a lot of the renovation and revitalization of what's going on downtown, as well as 
I got to say with the Lions doing their thing this year, it attracting people from other places, other parts of the United States, as well as other parts of the planet Earth. So I think that's what it's doing. It's um, generating a lot of more commerce, you know, a lot more trade, as well as um, with the present mayor that we have, Mayor Dungan, he's doing a lot of uh, coalition with small businesses, you know, and and for lack of a better word, people of color. I'll just say original people, you know, original people, mm-hmm. black people. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're doing it as well as for women. So they're doing a, they um city council and them are kicking off a lot of initiatives in that area. And I think that's one of, that's one of the many great things that's going on with the city. Cause once you can generate some form of commerce, some trade, you know, uh, launch off um, a lot of these small businesses where they can generate more cash flow, you know, that it, that's not only a good look, but that's a, uh, a good vibe for the city and for the citizens, mm-hmm. you know. Um, how do you feel about how they're like? You can go ahead and light up if you need okay. to. Okay. Yeah, man. I might shut this just a little teeny bit because the glasses. Boy, you might want to. Yeah, your glasses. Oh, we you know what? Actually, Ben, I'm not reading. I can take the glasses off. Yeah, there you go. I can see your eyes better. Take them off. Um, so, how do you feel about? How do you personally feel about the progress Detroit has made? And I hear people, the second part of that, they say, you know, Detroit's making downtown better. Yes, but they're leaving a lot of the neighborhoods not, they're not spending money up here. They're, it's all going downtown. Yeah, well, you, like you said, you kind of scrolled throughout the city yesterday. So you saw some of that, what, they was, what they're saying. Um, you know, uh, I think you kind of asked me this over the phone. Um, and... I, I agree with them. You know, there is a lot going on downtown, which is our center hub. You know, that's the hub that kind of bring everybody together, you know. So they're beautifying that in one aspect. But at the same time, I think what some of the people's um, gripe was, was that they was leaving out uh, native residents, you know, native um, Detroiters, you know, not giving them first dibs. Uh, boosting up the the property uh, value and things of that sort. And, you know, most people in Detroit couldn't afford to live or, you know, are living on uh, menu um, ends. So they couldn't afford when you boost up the the property value and things of that sort, they couldn't afford to live. So that was causing them to push in a lot of us out, you know, even with some of the businesses downtown, some of them are high end businesses, a person on a low budget, wouldn't be able to, you know, frequent there or patronize, you know, that business of sort. So um, I think um, they're trying to create with the city council that we have, I think they're trying to create a lot more inclusions, you know, by including more of, you know, your black and your brown or your underprivileged, you know, or your low income people or your, your people in your urban, rural neighborhoods, you know, or whatnot. So, you know, other than that, I think Detroit is doing good. Um, and that would be the thing. Um, work on the outskirts. Um, like we said, over that grass is seven mile, my old neighborhood, Jefferson and Hilbert, over in that area, you know, uh, Mac and B Wick, you know. Now, like I said, there's a lot of renovation or revitalization that's going on over there because they're starting to plant more trees and some of the ver- vacant lots, you know. But Detroit biggest issue, we had a we we not only had, we still have an existing blight issue. Detroit, uh, that's why that guy Stephen A. Jackson made that comment on CNN about if you go outside the downtown like a desert, because Detroit can almost be likened to a third world country because of the blight and the desolation, just being very desolate, you know, compared to most cities, you know. But however, that's because over the years ago, when we had a lot of corrupt politicians, they was raping Detroit, taking the resources and the money and running, you know. And in my honest opinion, that's what Kwame was trying to save us from. Other people, politicians that didn't have Detroit in the best interest, but knew Detroit was a gold mine and was trying to rape it of his resources. You know, one, the Great Water Authority, you know, and things of that sort. You know, I don't want to get into politics or anything like that. But, you know, my honest opinion, a native Detroiter, Mm -hmm. you know, 54 years old, came here when I was three, you know, been here since then. So I got 51 years invested besides I left to go live in New York for a short stint, uh, Cleveland, 
Atlanta, things of that sort. But Detroit always been home. That's where all my relatives at. Mm -hmm. You know, so I watched the uh, evolution or the elevation of Detroit. I remember when downtown was a ghost town. You know, and now look at it now. You know, Detroit is is a hub, is a mecca for a lot of things. You know, the Nation of Islam started here. You know, uh, techno music started here. We know Motown started here, as well as you know, with my man Henry Ford and you know, the Assembly Plant and things of that sort. So, Detroit, we call it D Mecca. The five percenters, the gods, we call it D Mecca. But Detroit is a mecca. You know what I mean? So it's a place where a lot of things kicked off. You know, a lot of things kicked off. So a lot of people pay homage to Detroit for that reason. You know, and like I said, I'm going to salute again to them Detroit Lions, man. Amon Ross St. Brown and them doing their thing. Jeff, you know, um, the quarterback, golf, and all them, man, you know. Two thumbs up. Yeah, yeah I think a lot of people were cheering for the Lions. Man, so, yeah. And I was going to be here for the Super Bowl. I was hoping they were going to be here so we could see Listen, me and my it. brother said it this morning, man, and I doing our waking bake. It don't even seem right, man. Detroit Lions ain't in there. I'm going to watch it, but it's going to have partial of my attention, mm -hmm. man. Detroit would have my whole attention. But, yeah, Detroit, on uh, that, thumb, uh, two thumbs up, man, to the city council, you know, the mayor, you know, the, the city officials who's trying to make Detroit and is striving daily to make Detroit a better, a better place, as well as the citizens, people such as myself, you know, who... Haven't left Detroit. I'm talking about, you know, still here and still rooting Detroit on. So this is a beautiful city. You know, uh, I mentioned to you, I don't know if you went down by the city county building. We got the big statue, the spirit of Detroit. And I said the spirit of Detroit is resilience, you know, to be knocked down, but get back up, you know, to not quit, to not wave the white flag, never throw the towel in. You know, that's the spirit of Detroit, the resilience. You know, Detroit was started in 1701 by Cadillac. It was founded in 1701 by Cadillac. Remember, this was first occupied by the French, you know? So, you know, we have a long, rich history. The people here are strong, vibrant. Good people here, some great people here. Warm, friendly, you know? Cause we hear the bad rep about Detroit and a lot of that sometimes, you know, Detroit is like anywhere in America. It can be a, a rough place or whatnot, but overall, this is a beautiful place with some beautiful people. You know, some good, hardworking people. You know, this is a blue collar state, you know. So when I say blue collar, this is a working class, you know. Well, most people know this what, you know, the big three and whatnot kicked off. That's why it's the Motor City. So this is a blue collar. This is where you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, you know. That's what it is. So I'm always root Detroit. This is home, man. Home is where the heart is. And Detroit is right here, you know. So when did the, you mentioned city officials, elected leaders back in the day, made this place worse by being greedy and selfish. When did Detroit, you seem positive about the current administration. Mm -hmm. How long ago did that start when people that actually gave a shit about making it better here started to kind of turn things around? How long ago was that? Uh, I want to say with Kwame Kilpatrick. Kwame started bringing a lot of stuff to the city. When was that? How uh, long ago was that? I'm not real good with years, man. Um, Kwame Kilpatrick, that was the mayor that wound up going to prison. Yeah, he was, he was different a bad things of that sort. Yeah. yeah. Well, however, but everybody doesn't feel that way. You know, right. I, I don't think, you know, I'm not uh, a political student, so I don't know all the ins and outs or the details. But if you want to ask me, when did I start to see a revitalization in Detroit? Um, I'll say through Kwame. Um, uh, I think I want to say Dennis Archer, who was a mayor for a short, st short period, was uh, striving to do different things. Like they were saying, it was under his watch when Detroit Lions came back to Detroit. Remember, we was out in Ann Arbor, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was- I mean, not Ann Arbor, excuse me, Arbor Hills. Yeah, so 20 years you know? ago when Detroit started to change? That's probably, probably something like that. Okay. 20, 20 years or maybe a little, 20 plus years, something like that. Okay. Yeah, around something like that, you start to see. That's when they started to work more on the downtown, if you want to say, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that I, I would say. So yeah, I would say that. Uh, and then, you know, you can't uh, forget the great mayor, Coma Young. Coma Young, you know, who was an outstanding mayor for the city of Detroit when I was a kid, you know, was doing outstanding things and, and was trying to keep things in Detroit, you know, and was trying to keep Detroit from having a bad rep, you know. He went through that whole thing of disbanding stress, you know, which was causing a lot of police brutality to underprivileged, um, people on this side of eight mile and things of that sort. So 
you know, I I had to tilt my hat and go all the way back to uh, how you want to say um, Coleman Young. I just think there's always been you know an underhand where different politicians was really just trying to rape um, Detroit of its natural resources. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This the Great Lake State. Mm -hmm. You know, so one of our main resources is fresh water. You know, so you know. But yeah, over the last 20 plus odd years is what I would say is when I started to see the revitalization of Detroit when it was um, no longer being a ghost town. Because at one time, like I said, our downtown was like a ghost town. Yeah. You know, you went down there at night, you know. And now, you know, people from all walks of life mm -hmm. are down there. Yeah, I was see busy people last walking night. dogs. I already know Saturday night. That used to be our days, Friday and Saturday night. That's why, why I don't go down there as much now. We was down there hustling, you know, selling CDs, man, distributing music. And so we come in contact, any of the games, any of the events that brought people together, man. We was at the Hoedown, we was at the Kenny Chesney concert, you know what I mean? You name it, we, we was doing it all. So we dealt with all genres, you know, people from all walks of life. What else does Detroit need to do? Like if you were in charge, if, in if there were like one or two things, what are the biggest problems? That still oh, if I was in charge and, and things could go my way, as they say, if you, it was a perfect world, then we'll start working on the, you know, the neighborhoods, you know, not only would I have that downtown, right, these neighborhoods would be right. Like, what would you, you do know? here? Like, knock down all the, continue to knock if, down? If I could do it like that and that was feasible, I know it's a lot, it, it's a lot goes into running the city and running the state. You know, I did have a political science class before when I went to college. So I do understand it's more than, that's why I say if I could have it my way and, if I just snap my finger, it could be done, I'm saying, then yeah, first thing I would work on is vi viable housing. Uh, probably, you know, not make the rent so sky high as well as, you know, beautify the city a little more, you know. Not just the downtown, but I'll be working on the inner city. I'm an inner city kid, you know, so I can't turn my back on the inner city if I can have it my way. And I'm not saying that this uh, administration, as far as mayor and city council, are not trying to do that, it's just, they know more than what I know far as the ins and outs, the intricate, you know, the things you got to bid on and all that. That stuff takes time. So, you know, I know it can't just happen overnight, but I think if you got people with, you know, sincere minds and sincere hearts and, you know, want the best for Detroit, and I think that's what we got, you know, I think, you know, I could be wrong. I'm making an assumption and I'm doing it from the distance, you know, because I don't know any of them, any of them personally, you know what I mean? I'm not walking you know, side by side with them to seeing what they're doing and looking over their shoulder. So I can't criticize or applaud. You understand what I'm saying? But overall, I do see some progression. Mm -hmm. I do see some progression. And I think slowly but surely is, leak, is leaking out, spilling out into the, the neighborhoods only because one, like I said, one of the biggest things I talked about first was them endorsing or creating an initiative in the coalition with the small businesses, empowering them, you know, giving out a lot of those are grants that they're giving them. You know what I mean? We know most businesses don't survive based off cash flow, you know. So by them, you know, generating cash flow, this is gonna keep the business alive. This is jobs for most usually people that work right in the inner city, young kids go to high school or whatnot. So this is empowering the citizens as well as empowering the city. Most of these People are native Detroiters, and most of them don't have any plans to go anywhere besides maybe go off to college and then come right back here, you know. But it's got to be something here for them to take that knowledge or that education that they just gained in four years or getting a master's degree to add on to, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what they're doing, you know. I try not to be too much of a critic, but at the same time, I don't want to give people kudos and they don't really deserve it, you know. So if you watch me, I'm just being objective. I'm being objective. You know, being, I'm a very optimistic person, so I have to keep a broad view of things. Like I say, I'm not a politician. You know, I don't, I haven't ran a city. I'm not an elected official or a designated But you're optimistic office. about the future of Detroit. Yeah. And a lot of people that around this, the neighborhoods and people you talk to, they also seem optimistic about Detroit. A lot of people do and a lot of people don't. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes when you let people down over the years, some people lose faith and all that, but uh, I think with what's been going on and some of that, I think more people are starting to, um, their their eagerness and their vitality for Detroit and perseverance is starting to, you know, kick back in more, have a reboot or whatnot. And a lot of that is with just the things that's been happening. You know, like I said, we got the 
NFL draft coming this year. You know, so those things that things that put the spotlight on Detroit for a minute where the world sit back and and see life from our eyes for a minute, you know, and see, okay, this is not a bad place. It's a beautiful place. You know, like I said, Detroit has a lot to offer. Even with the bankruptcy, that was publicized because I communicate with a lot of people in New York and other places. And that was the biggest thing people used to ask me years ago, what's going on? Because a lot of that made world news. You know, usually we always say bad news travel faster than good news. So a lot of the good things is going on in Detroit. You don't hear about it. You have to come. That's why I watched quite a few YouTube videos of guys who came in. They said, well, I didn't know Detroit was like this. I didn't know it. And there's a guy who walked through Hamtramck, Dearborn. He went to quite a few places. He didn't know all the diversity of even food as well as the people, you know, because a lot of times though, things like that is not in the spotlight. It's not being highlighted. You have to come and see that for yourself, you know. So I think what's going on now is... That's why I said Detroit is becoming a tourist attraction. So by being a tourist attraction, it's attracting people from other places to want to come and visit, to want to come and do stuff like this, documentaries or interviews, as well as causing people who used to, who are from Detroit and maybe been living in Arizona and New York and other places for the last 15, 20 years and say, you know what, I want to go back home. Do you know what, my city ain't a bad. And now ha with having a winning team, those sports franchises helps too. You know, because that's what I was saying. Our city was being blighted. Um, downtown was a ghost town. The Pistons wasn't winning. The Lions wasn't winning. I mean, Red Wings always been winning. You know, they always, you know. So biggest thing we always had was a hockey team besides when we, when the bad boys did their thing back with Isaiah Thomas and them. So, you know, so I think with the Lions and I keep putting them in there and just with a lot of the revitalization that's going on with the city and people such as yourself that give us a good press, that's going to bring some of the, Native Detroiters that that took the flight, that left, to come on back, as well as people to say, you know what, I want to live somewhere else. You know what, maybe Detroit seemed like a place I would like to make home. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house, too. Email me and I'll work with you on not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country, and I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. And by the way, if you want to learn about where you should live, you should go to my website, homesnacks.com slash find your place. On my website, you get tips on where you should move and what the costs are and a whole lot more. It's like an AI Nick Johnson consultation for free. And if you want to buy some Mappy gear, click the store link on my homepage. From there, you can check out the latest merch. There's hoodies, coffee cups, stickers, and shirts. Show off how much you love Mappy and support the channel. And I'm on Cameo too. If you want me to send you or somebody you know a personalized video message, go to Cameo and search Nick Johnson YouTube. It's fun. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.